Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Wendy and I'm with Inspire Ministries and I am so glad that you are here today. Today we are going to be tackling the large subject of bitterness and I have a lot to say about it. I cannot tell you what character trait that I despise the most than bitterness. And yet, in my own life, I have seen bitterness rear its ugly head on more than one occasion. So I am never pointing fingers. I am always collaboratively saying this is a we thing. How do we get better? How do we wrestle with bitterness? What do we do with bitterness? And what does the Bible have to say about bitterness? That's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's just get right in the video. I can deal with a lot of things. I feel like I can, but admittedly, I struggle the most when I am in the presence of bitterness. You can almost feel it the moment that you enter the room. Bitterness is ugly. To me, it is repulsive, it is offensive, and it's something else, I believe, for me at least, it is highly contagious. When I am around bitterness for far too long, it behaves as a ravaging contagion that I feel like I find nearly impossible to break free from. The Bible has a lot to say about the danger of bitterness. Ephesians 4.31 says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Proverbs 14.10 says, Each heart knows its own bitterness, and no one can fully share its joy. And take a look at Hebrews 12.15. It says, Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. We are, according to this Hebrews 12.15 verse, to look after each other, so that none fails to receive the grace of God. This is huge. This tells us that we can't just keep this to ourselves, that we must look out for other people, to look out for other believers who might be allowing this contagion, this bitter root of bitterness to come up and corrupt many to destroy themselves and to corrupt many. And what does it say? So that no one fails to receive the grace of God. Why might we not receive the grace of God? Because often there's a root of bitterness that grows up and it troubles us and it corrupts many. You see how I broke this down? I, I gave myself this idea that I had to extrapolate every single word in, that, in those couple sentences. Look after each other so that no one fails to receive the grace of God. Sometimes, you know, I feel like, and I just want to say this, and I want to be honest when I say this, sometimes we think, well, as long as I'm just looking out for myself, as long as I am making sure that I am good, I don't have to worry about anybody else. Because once I worry about someone else, it's pointing out sin, that's being judgmental, and I don't want to be that way. Listen, again, I want to say to you something that is so important. When you see the sin, you are to call it out. Why are we to call it out? Because it is an abomination to God. Because God hates sin. He loves the sinner and he hates the sin. And you and I, who are made in his image, need to replicate that kind of behavior. Hate the sin, but love the sinner. And there is a threat here that we may not receive the grace of God if we allow that trouble from that bitter root to allow to grow in our life. The honest truth is that bitterness is appealing. <laughs> there I said it. Bitterness is really appealing, isn't it? I know that oftentimes in my life, I've thought bitterness was the right answer. It is appealing. I think it's appealing because it's reasonable. It makes sense. It makes sense to our flesh. It feels good. And so it seems as it is the reasonable solution. And we can justify it all day long. Look out into the world today 
And by earthly standards, we have every reason to be bitter, right? Bitter because of inflation, bitter over governmental failures, bitter over sickness, bitter over disease, bitterness over family brokenness. Bitterness is reasonable and it's primarily accepted no matter what kind of environment that we're in, whether or not we are in a Christian environment or not. But it's absolutely positively contaminating and corrupting by nature. And it must not reside. It must not reside anywhere close to the Christian heart and mind, lest it destroys us altogether. And it will quickly destroy us. I have seen bitterness rip families apart, and I'm sure you have too. Proverbs 4.23 says this, guard your heart above all else. And according to Hebrews 12.15, bitterness acts as a poisonous root, which destroys and brings death to everything in its path. Bitterness in a person contaminates the very atmosphere by which those seeking after holiness will become contaminated as well and infected if we aren't aware of what's going on. A great example, a, a positively wonderful example is something that happened to me in my own life. Years ago, I remember walking into my home at the end of my day and there were some people there. There were some family and some friends there in my home and I could just feel something the moment that I entered the room. Something wasn't right. I cannot describe to you any better than this, but it felt like evil and I knew that it had to go. I'd felt it before. Honestly, if I'm being truthful, I had felt it before, but this was the first time that I was able to appropriately recognize clearly that it was evil and what I needed to do. I began to pray, not out loud, but I began to pray in my spirit. I began to pray internally and pray for God to get rid of the evil and not just to get rid of it, but to protect me from replicating the evil that I was seeing. It was bitterness and it was ugly. It had attached itself to a person who was in my home that day and it was affecting our entire environment. The atmosphere I felt was tainted by the bitterness of one person. And I might have been tempted, if I'm being honest, I might have been tempted to incriminate the person but I knew that it was of a satanic nature. And if left to linger much longer, it could have naturally began to affect everyone in that room, me included. I just kept praying. And in that time, I just kept praying and thanking God that I was able to properly discern what was taking place, that what was going on in my home didn't belong to the person necessarily, but it was the evil this person had brought in from the bitterness that they had not allowed to get rid of and to be rid of in their life. I wrote later in my journal that week concerning the situation that I must do three things. I must stay awake, be alert, and seek wisdom. Stay awake, be alert, and seek wisdom. Why? Because as believers in Jesus, it is so important for us to stay clean in our attitude and pure in our hearts in the midst of all of the difficulty that we face. So I have to stay awake, to be alert of my surroundings, and to seek wisdom. That stay awake is to make sure that I am staying aware of what's going on around me. Stay aware of what is happening, especially as it relates to the spiritual realm. There is so much that is after us when we give our lives to Jesus. And so we need to be awake now more than ever. Friends, this is the time for you and I as Christians to guard ourselves, to, to stand firm in our faith, and to stay awake. The next one, be alert. Be alert. Be alert without it negatively affecting you, but be aware. Be alert of the things that are going on around you. Be alert of all of the ways that the enemy is trying to kill, steal, and destroy, and then seek wisdom. And that seeking wisdom, what I mean from that, what I mean by that is to seek God, to pray. 
I said to somebody recently, I said, you need to be praying. And they said, I can't pray. I said, I don't care if you think that you can't pray, pray, talk, say the words. Get up in the middle of the night if you have to. I'm doing a great study right now, a personal study on the third watch. You know that there were watches, uh, military watches, that there are four military watches throughout the evening. The first one is 6 to 9 p.m. The second one is 9 to midnight. The third one is midnight to 3 a.m. And the fourth one is 3 a.m. to 6. And there are scholars who believe that it is in that third watch where it's the most dangerous, where satanic activity is mostly going on in our world, where it is the place where Satan wants to get in. He wants to kill. He wants to steal and he wants to destroy. It's during that third watch. I'll talk about more of that in an upcoming video. But for right now, I want to tell you to keep watch to keep watch, to keep alert, to stay awake, and to seek his wisdom, to just begin to pray. I have it in my heart that when I wake up in the middle of the night, let's say to go to the bathroom or something, and I can't go back to sleep, I always assume that that is because the Lord has me awake in that midnight hour, in that middle of the night time frame, so that I can be praying, praying for our government, praying for my friends and family, praying for the world, praying for our nation, praying for all of these big items that have us worried from day to day. Stay awake, be alert, and seek wisdom. Why do we need to do this so badly with bitterness? Is because I believe that bitterness is a nasty contagion. Look at the word contagion. It means this, making something impure or unsuitable by contact with something unclean or bad, rendering something harmful or unusable. Wow, rendering it unusable. So when I carry around bitterness in my heart, when I carry around this bitter, this envy, this pride, this ugly root of bitterness within me, when I allow that to be the thing that occupies a place in my heart, I become unusable for the kingdom. And we have Christians all of the time who wonder why I can't do the will of God, why I can't know what he wants me to do for my life. Can I be really blunt and tell you, oftentimes it is because there is sin that is still separating you from God. There is still sin that you need to rid yourself from. There is still repentance in your life that you need to demand to, to do in your life, that you need to speak this repentance out loud that you need to get rid of the very thing that is separating you from the heart of God. And that might mean that you need to get rid of bitterness. That might be an entitlement attitude. That might just be a negative attitude. It might be a jealous spirit. It might be just this, this ugliness that you carry in because of what spews from your mouth. Whatever it is in you that might be attached to bitterness, it has to go because it is the thing that is separating you from God. Listen, he is not going to take up residency in a space, in a heart that is already filled with roots of bitterness. He can't. He cannot, his holiness cannot come in and reside in that same space where bitterness has taken root and bitterness is allowed to manifest itself in a life because you are saying that there is still something that you cannot get rid of. There's still something that you have clung to. There's still some earthly thing that you cannot get rid of. And because of that, because of that, you are disallowing the Holy Spirit to do the work that only he can do in your life. Can he come in? Can he forgive you? Can he rid that from your life? Yes, but you need to actively work with him to pray that he would remove that bitterness from your heart and from your life. Wow. We cannot afford to risk contamination from the world and corruption from hell itself. We cannot. 
Do you suffer from bitterness? Do you have that bitter attitude? Do you feel it when you are talking with somebody, let's say, and they tell you about some great promotion that they just received, or maybe they just received great news or a great report about something, or maybe they're able to take a great vacation and you can feel the bitterness taking root. You can feel the jealousy. You can feel the bad attitude. Listen, you might not be able to even identify it as bitterness, but you know that something evil is there. You know that you have this bad attitude that doesn't stem from a life lived with Christ. It doesn't stem from the fullness that Christ died from us to ha- for us to have. It doesn't come from that freedom that we as believers have in Jesus Christ. It comes from separation from Him. And so we have to get rid of it. It's time to pray it away. Bitterness has what I believe the potential to kill, steal, and destroy. And the price that we pay for its residency, listen, it is way too expensive. It tells us in Hebrews 12, 15, that we will not receive the grace of God because of that bitter root that's allowed to grow and fester and manifest itself in our life. Listen, we need to think about, is there any bitterness in my life? Is there an ugliness of bitterness that needs to go in my life? What is it, friend? Is this something that you suffer from or suffer with? I will be praying for you because I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult, especially if you've lived your whole entire life with this bitterness. It's gonna be really, really challenging to cut it off, to get rid of it. But it is possible. With Jesus, anything is possible. If you have liked this video today, friends, I pray that you would just give it a huge thumbs up. I pray for you all of the time. Would you share this video with someone that you know and that you love? Friend, I pray that you would continue to come back to view videos just like this one. And in an effort to do that, all you need to do is hit that subscription button down below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified for every single time that I upload content. That means that it will just be an alert right to your phone or right to your computer and you will be notified. That way you can watch my latest video. I don't want you to miss a thing. Friends, I thank you for being with me today. I do not take your presence here lightly or I do not take it for granted. You are my friends. I love you. I care for you. And I really want what's best for you. Thank you for joining me on this journey. And I pray that today you have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye, friend.